Okay, welcome back to uh, the February where I just listened to the new Sailor Moon CD and talk about it. And yeah, why didn't I do this in like March and I could do like musical March or some other alliteration thing, but no, instead I had to be dumb and do it in February. So we continue on with Otome no Policy number four uh, by Itsuko Yakushimaru. Yakushimaru. Otome no Policy is another one that I didn't really like the original of. We're starting off strong with another one that I'm... Maybe we'll just start at the bottom and work our way up. Let's try it. Okay. Otome no Policy. Let's go. Maiden Policy. It's interesting. Don't know what's going on. I don't know if I like it. This is so weird. I don't know if I like it or if I'm just really confused. Somebody tell me what I'm feeling, because I don't know. I don't know if I like this. I really don't know if I like this or not. Musically, it's very interesting, but like... I'm so confused. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this. I really don't. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. She's like weirdly whispering into my ear and just on the side, the way that it's separated. I don't really like that part. I, d I don't know what to think. Um, one thought that came into my head um, was like, this song sal is sounds like Benedict Cumberbatch's face looks really alien and strange and I don't know if I'm attracted to it or if I'm just morbidly curious about it. And I love Benedict Cumberbatch. I love him so with all of my heart, but there are some occasions where I see a picture of him and I'm just like, your face is very strange there. So I do understand where all of the he's a weird alien comments come from. And that's kind of how I feel about this song. Like. Musically, it was very interesting. I like, I liked all the like twinkly we're in space and uh, it, I just felt like we're on a rocket ship just cruising throughout our space and some shooting stars and everything really twinkly and you know, and but then like the weird baby whispering singing. I, I'm not really, I didn't really dig the singing so much, especially towards the end. So I'm not sure. I'm like, I'm leaning more towards I like it than I dislike it, but like it's I'm um, it's really close to being on the fence. Like I'm sitting on the fence and like I am kind of falling off the fence and I'm probably gonna land on the side of I like it, but I just might land on the side of I don't like it. I'm gonna have to listen to that one a couple of times just to see how I feel about it because, huh. I like it more than the original one, I'll say that much. <laughs> Song number five, it's La Soldier by Tommy Heavenly Six. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna pause it. I'm don't I can't start it yet because I'm not I'm not emotionally prepared for this. I feel like I am, but I'm not. There are tears already preforming in my eyes from the song. And okay. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Okay, do I press play? I'm building up anticipation. I was gonna make, I have to, I have to click play because if I don't, I'm just gonna build up anticipation. It's not gonna be as good as I want it to be. But it's already gonna be so good. Okay, play. Oh, very interesting opening. I 
like it. Tomoko. I kind of miss the wolf in the background. Letting it happen. There's, I'm not gonna say anything else. And take it away, Jimmy. Goosebumps. There are goosebumps. <sighs> um. Okay. Ah, uh, that was really good. <laughs> Um, <sighs> uh, it was a little more polished. The guitar was a little more polished than in the original. Um, I liked it felt more raw in the original song. Um, like there was a lot more sharp edges on the guitar notes. Um, but Jimmy Oma is the guitarist for Tommy Heavenly Six and I have been saying since 2008 that I would like to jump his bones because I love what he does with the guitar. So, uh, <laughs> um, but I, I might be, uh, really into what James DeBardo was doing with the drums there. Um, that was really good too. I miss the wolf, the wolf howls that were in, uh, the original. That was like, it was really weird, but like you get used to it and then you just really like it and you expect there to be a wolf howling. Um, so I would have liked it if Jimmy had done like a little trill on the guitar at that point to allude to it. He did at one point, I feel, uh, during like the second wolf spart that would have gone there. Again, too, a little, little too soft. Like they, the, the notes felt more curved than jagged edges. Tomoko, she's, she's a wonderful singer. Um, so like I'm, totally fine with what she did there. Uh, I just, I did miss a little bit, um, in the original song, it's kind of a power ballad with multiple female voices singing, so you feel like it's the senshi singing as they're going into battle, which is why it works really well in a musical format. So I did feel like it lost a little something, a little something, by not having multiple singers. The beginning, it, like, immediately set the mood like we were in a graveyard and a battlefield, and it was like shit was about to go down. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But it was still really good, and I would still really like it if Tommy Heavenly Six, like, covered all of the songs just to see what they did, because that was, there were some really interesting choices for Lost Soldier. Um, so you're really interested to see what they would do with everything else. Okay. Peace. It's good. Everything's fine, because now we're going into I Know Senshi, which is another one I was really looking forward to. So I Know Senshi by Mariko Goto and... Avu Chan of the band Ziyu Folk something, I can't read the rest of it. Mariko Goto is going in, so there's dual vocals in this, and it's a male and female. So I'm pretty interested to see how this goes. Sailor Moon songs are not generally sung with male voices, so I'm very interested to see how this goes. Let's hit play and find out. Okay, there are goosebumps here. There weren't goosebumps for Lost Soldier. Like, I still get goosebumps to the old Lost Soldier song, but there are goosebumps now for this, so I'm good. Fan 
sound of her voice. Dual vocals is good. He's he's really good. I like guitar and bass work. Voice. Musically, this matches the old one almost perfectly. It's really good. Okay, musically that really matched the energy and the like gotta go at um, how it was in the old song and that was really good. I, I don't, I didn't like her voice. Her voice, not that great. Um, she, I think she was, she felt like she was straining a little bit, like she was at the top of her vocal range. When she was lower, it sounded fine but she was just up too high. His voice was really good, except for that really weird thing that he did at that one point. Um, and when they blended, they were great. The duo was awesome. Um, or all the duo parts were really awesome. This song gave me, like, I, the old song, I always picture the scene that it was used in the anime when it was, um, they're going to Tokyo Tower, um, and Haruk and Michiru are kind of interrogating Usagi because she has to go and save Mamoru because he's been kidnapped by Kari Knight, and it's, uh, they're like, you know, are you sure you want to be the sacrificial lamb in their weird coded language because that's how they roll. Um, this one gave me more of a battle feel. Like, that, that was more, the old one was, were, going into battle and we're getting ready for battle. This one is more, I think, I think the dual vocals like help with that. Um, especially towards the end, I was kind of like the way I was imagining a music video in my head as you do. Um, like they're kind of spinning around each other and trying to better each other and they meet in the middle and then that's when the duo happens and like it's kind of like this battle of vocals and that gives it more of a battlefield feel. Um, so I'll be interested to see where they use this song. If they do, I don't think they're, they're probably not going to, but if they did, I would like to see how they used it in the series. Just saying. So that's the three for this week. Um, I word vomited a little bit more, but I have more feelings about these songs, I guess. I had, they, they had me think more about them. Um, they, they made me think a little bit more than the other ones. So that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, so, uh, out of the two, three songs we listened to, um, I liked two and a half out of the three, because I'm st I, I'm still not sure about Otome no Policy. Um, still solidly on the fence about that. I'm sure on a, re on a, if I listen to it again, I'm sure it'll go a different way but yeah I did I loved I loved La Soldier did not love it as much as I love the original I'm sorry to say and I but I'm still you know I, I love Tommy Heavenly Six so um, and I really liked aside from the female vocals except for when she was you know at a non top of her straining singing voice I, 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 yeah so 2.5 out of three. So that gives us a solid out of the six songs we've listened to. I liked four out of six. So that's, that's not bad. Pretty good. Halfway through. All right. Okay. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>